League season has brought some late equalisers, some unlikely goal scorers, and the usual quota of heroics and heartbreak. The best of the action coming up, starting at Selhurst Park, where Terry Venables' return to club management with Crystal Palace was spoiled by a late Bolton equaliser. Always a smile, and always with a bit of style. Under Venables, Crystal Palace were once dubbed the team of the 80s. Well, El Tell's second spell should take them into the next millennium with a few new faces, plenty of muscle and a bit of bonding along the way. Fun and games at Selhurst Park, but it'll be a long, hard season. There's a lot of razzmatazz attached to this opening game, but we've got to forget that. We've got a massive job on our hands. We've got to be professional about it, and I'm sure the boys will be. Palace and Bolton are tipped to bounce straight back up to the Premiership. And though little should be read into opening day performances, Bolton had by far the better of this game. Neil Cox and Jimmy Phillips came close. And Dean Holdsworth, a Selhurst star in his Wimbledon days, scored the opener. The two Terrys were having a frustrating time, but some choice words at half-time did the trick, as did their million-pound men. Matt Jansen equalised. And Sasha Serchik planted what he hoped would be the winner. There was half an hour to play, but even then Bolton took until injury time to make their point. Arnar Gunnlaugsson spoiled Palace's party. I'm not really uh, interested in, in Palace, and I'm, I'm not being disrespectful to them, but they have a, they have a good manager, they have good players. Uh, but I just look at ourselves and I thought we were very positive today. Hugs on the pitch, but no love lost on the opening day of the season. Ollie Foster, Sky News, Selhurst Park. At the Stadium of Light, but it came at a price. Their midfielder Lee Clark broke his leg in the 36th minute in this tackle with Rangers' Keith Rowland. Clark has only just recovered from a hernia operation. He's now expected to be out for several months. Afterwards, both managers, Peter Reid and Ray Harford of Rangers, said there was no malice in the challenge. The only goal of the game came 15 minutes from time. It was Martin Scott's cross that caused the problems and Queen's Park Rangers Ian Barraclough handling with his keeper Lee Harper stranded. Barraclough got the red card and it all gave Kevin Phillips, Sunderland's record-breaking goal scorer, the chance to claim all the points for Sunderland. A goal in each half gave Birmingham all the points against Port Fell. That was Paul Furlong with the opener after 21 minutes. The free kick awarded when Neil Aspin had fouled Delhi Adibola, and Adibola himself, a former crew player, added the second goal after 68 minutes, and that's where the scoring finished, 2-0 to Birmingham. Wolves got their campaign off on the right note at home to Tranmere. Robbie Keane, the Republic of Ireland player, opening the scoring just before the midway point in the first half. He enjoyed it. The modern new crowd waited till three minutes from time before the points were secure. A penalty. Keith Curl converting. The Tranmere manager John Aldridge sent from the dugout for disputing that penalty. And his team had also had Clinton Hill sent off earlier. And newly promoted Watford gave a good account of themselves at Portsmouth in their first game back in Division 1, despite falling behind to a cracking goal from John Aloisi. Two goals in four minutes transformed the game near the end. The Watford equaliser, a soft own goal from Andy Thompson, and it was to get worse for the Fratton Park fans. The winner for Graham Taylor's side coming from the former Nottingham Forest striker Jason Lee with just six minutes left. 2-1 to Watford. So a full check for you on the Division 1 results. Barnsley 2, West Brom and went to Main Road. Stressed the importance of a good start to the season and roared on by their long-suffering but fanatical following. City got the goal their play deserved. Paul Dickoff played to the whistle when others stopped and his pass was met by Sean Gota, the ball crossing the line before Banks scooped it out of the Blackpool goal. Blackpool had been dangerous on the break, but prompted by a slimmed down Jamie Pollock in midfield and the effervescent Dickoff, City settled their nerves midway through the second half. Dickoff's mazy run and Lee Bradbury silencing the critics who've branded him an expensive flop since his move from Portsmouth last season. The confidence was now flowing, and City wrapped it up with a third from their Georgian defender, Takadze, to make Joe Royal a happy man. 
So I thought we were strong and steady and, and very fit. I mean, I thought we were committed right till the end. Uh, you know, we weren't going to flag, and, and that was important because this side gave away 14 goals in the last 10 minutes of games last year. Well, we've got to make sure that doesn't happen this year. An emphatic win.